Hello and welcome to another season of Florida State Football and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block with Coach Fisher. And Coach, congratulations. Uh, win number one is in the books. Hard fought effort, but your team emerges with a 37-31 victory over Oklahoma State. It really was. The season openers are always tough. Uh, had a lot of uh, new guys put in positions and had to be counted upon. Did some good things and we'll learn from it. Even some older guys. It taking more a bigger responsibility role in some things that we're going to learn and grow from. But, uh, you know, very proud of the way we competed in the game and never what, never what the situation was, never what the score was, dealing with adversity and finding ways to win the game. Obviously, there's uh, plenty of room for improvement, for, and, and the good news is it's fixable. But you also have to tip your cap to Oklahoma State. They came ready to play and, and played oh, very well. Did a tremendous job. I said that. Mike Gundy's been the coach there now for going into his 10th year. They'd never won less than eight games. They were in the verge of playing for a national championship a few years ago, won 41 games the last three years. They're used to winning and playing in big-time games also. They had a very good program. It was a great game and a good start to the season for Florida State. Plenty of highlights to take a look at, and we'll do that as soon as we come back. That's up next here in the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show, Florida State, with an opportunity to play on the big stage in uh, Arlington, Texas. It really was a great atmosphere, great crowd support, just a good experience as you go into opening day. It really was. I mean, you talk about getting prepared for postseason play or bowl games or playoff games or anything of that nature. That was the same environment you had right there, a tremendous venue. I mean, Jerry thought of everything when he built that place. <laughs> no question about it. <laughs> Take a look at the highlights and obviously a nice... Uh, we thank for our administration for allowing us to, to help promote Kids First Fund and... Uh, the Fanconi Anemia uh, Awareness, and uh, thank him very much. And we were there from the back of our hands. Great kickoff here. We The first two kickoffs, we did a heck of a job. We kicked the ball we were supposed to. We pinned him inside. One got one here at the 18. The next one, we ended up getting it to three. Their little returner was a good player, and uh, but we did a good job early on covering those kicks. Our defense did a great job getting a three and out right off the bat, playing very physical up front, playing very disciplined. And that's what happened as the game went on. We kept getting out of our gaps and what caused us some problems. But uh, nice job here. Uh, Mario Edwards, there's Jacob Pugh as a true freshman getting in the game, making some plays. Uh, they get a punt, and uh, we get the ball right back, get good field position. Rashad Green did a great job of catching punts all night long. First drive, we were very sharp, I thought. I thought we were crisp on the throws here. Jameis comes down to a third option, finds uh, Christian Green out in the flat. Great to see Christian made two really big catches in the game, and uh, getting us started in that first drive was very critical. Jameis was pretty sharp early. Like I said, we were moving the football. Here they come with a blitz read, and uh, he sights it down to Kermit. Who had a, that's a nice pickup by Kermit. Kermit changed his route, broke it off, got us the first down. And then uh, here we get an outside. Now, daggone, I thought we were down here. That shouldn't have been. They'd give us a bad spot on that, but we got to hold on that football. They were physical. They were running to the ball, making us commit to the – committing to stopping the run, which we were able to throw for 370. But uh, they were getting a nice blitz, and then, again, James finding the hot read down to Nick O'Leary. played a very good football game. We missed the third down, ended up a yard short, but again, Roberto come in and great get points on that opening drive. It's very uh, satisfying, you know, calms the nerves and gets you into the flow of the game. Again, here, great kickoff. We changed the side, got it to hit the ground, and we cover. This sets, I mean, our special teams really set up the tone of those first two things. We're great, I mean, we contain them very well. Here's what we're doing. We're keeping leverage on the defense, get the three-yard line, which is tremendous. And then here's a huge play by Nate Andrews coming up. They try to play action. Nate jumps up, old Mr. Football, and tips the ball, and, we get a touchdown right off the bat, and the field position was critical in that. And then we didn't cover the kicks late in the game like we did early, and that was a critical thing. We got to learn to finish through the game. Great play there by Nate Andrews. There. Ten nothing lead early on for Florida State, and things looking good out of the gate. They really are. Another good kick. Uh, Roberto gets the ball back. Uh, we give up a little return. We get a little undisciplined right here. We we get out of our lane. And I'm gonna tell you, when he gets the sideline, that guy's dang good play by Roberto. Actually, could have came down, been a little tighter safety, and kept it about ten yards shorter, but it was a very nice play. They get a naked, they're getting out on the, in the edges. Great job by Jalen Ramsey. Played, I thought, very well on the perimeter last night on his edge stuff. A couple times he got out flanked, but not bad. Here we go, they get the ball out. We're doing a great job of setting the edges of the defense, and that's where we got lax late, but uh, great job early. Getting pressure, pushing the pocket. There's uh, Mario Weber's getting a batted ball on third down. He's in a D-tackle, rushing along with Jacob Pugh, Eddie Goldman. They're doing a good job. And we start moving the ball, get a little screen out here to Carlos. Carlos, we got the ball to about 25, 26 times in the game. He got to touch it, did some good things with it. But uh, here we are getting the drop back. Now, Jameis, we get a holding call. They, the guy we were trying to throw to, they tackled. But Jameis can't do this. That ball there, once he sees it ain't there, he's got to get rid of it, get it out of his hand, and, and, and be going with it. He's trying to make too many big plays. But, again, jumped it down to Rashad Green. Great job by Rashad. He and Rashad had great chemistry and have it for a long time. Here we get a short yard. We missed a tackle. We missed, missed a block up front. We missed a block, and uh, we would have had that. Carlos can't let that ball come out. He's trying too hard. Luckily, he was down. They blew it dead. And... Uh, 
and then Kaysen here coming on. We're getting a, a, not a very good kick, and uh, we lost field position in the punting game. They didn't punt very well either. And we're giving up the edges, which we can't do here. That, that's, that's unforgivable. We were in a coverage lane, and we kicked the ball in the middle of the field, should have kicked the ball on the right. We've got to get that corrected, and uh, got to get it corrected quickly. We didn't do that all camp and played very well in the spring game. I tell you, Terrence Smith, I thought, really jumped out at me on defense. Had 12 tackles on defense. I thought played very well in run pass situations. Here they are on a deep ball over the top. Nate Andrews, great play, but then again, call a ton. You can't get up and do those things. That's, that's an undisciplined. It's a great play, but then it's an undisciplined play. It's a selfish play because we get a 15-yard penalty. Things that we will have never done before, and we're, not, we're going to get those fixed. Now he turned around makes a real good play right here by P.J. Williams on the a naked coming back in the flat. I thought P.J. played well coming back off his injury during the camp. Here they are. We're getting pressure. Great job inside. Great job by... Uh, Jalen Ramsey, so long, makes you throw the ball so perfect. And we get lucky right here. They miss a field goal. And we're able to take the ball back and, uh, and move it back down the field. We get the first play, and I think we hit a big play to Christian Green here. And uh, we get a play action. We had something we're trying to work inside of Nick, and they, but they jumped down on Nick and give us a post over the top. James saw it and hit it. Boy, I mean, we should score here. Just got caught by the shoelaces there and uh, got tackled. We end up not scoring in this drive because we drop a ball in the flat. Then we uh, miss the throw, have a short route, and then we try to force a third and ten right here. And we got field goal range. We get a pick. We get a, that was one of the things we didn't do a good job of in the red zone. We were down there three times, turned it over, and had two field goals, and didn't score touchdowns. And I'll then allow them to get some momentum coming back. They lost contain right here on the quarterback, but uh, he did a nice job on the night of scrambling, keeping plays alive for them. I thought they did a nice job. Great, yeah. There you go. Good gap control inside. Reggie Northup up inside. Eddie Goldman. There's Tyler Hunter, uh, Marcus Walker. All did a nice job. Rush missed a, missed a sack right there. P.J. misses a sack. Jacob should have been underneath, though, but then um, Marquez gets it. Jay, you got to be careful on the sideline there. And we take the ball back and move it again. And great job on a third down pickup, backed up in our own territory to, to uh, Nick O'Leary. Did a great job by him. Good, nice play action. Now, this is a heck of a throw and catch right here by Jamison uh, Rashad. Right on the money. Rashad's down the sideline for another big play. Ah, oh, make him miss and score, but still made a great play. And, uh, we're moving down the field. We get a little naked route, I think, after that. And, uh, and uh, right here, we get a little play action, get the ball right to back to Nick in the flat right here. Nick turns it up, did a good job. Nick had a really good game on the night. We tried to get it to him three or four or five more times, and it just didn't work out. And here, uh, great to see this guy. Mario Pender in the game, great run, makes a guy unblocked, miss, score. First carry of the season, gets a touchdown. And that's kind of the way he's been in camp all year, and they're very proud of him and they're happy for him. Great job up front and get up 17-0. Yeah, things looking good at this point, but uh, credit Oklahoma State. They, they come right back right yeah. here. We got, we still, we, right here, we've been keeping great contain the whole night. We're in position. We just get lazy. We just get a little lazy, take a little, a little let up right here as far as our discipline. It's not effort. It's more discipline. They get a ball outside and uh, on a rail route, but we get a holding call back inside. It wasn't on him. Was, we had P.J. got a holding call back inside. And then we, uh, they get a play action right here. Take a shot down the field. Good play right here. Darby gets back in there and breaks it up. Comes off his guy and helps Tyler Hunter make a play. And then uh, it's a good one. They get, they get a nice little angle route underneath to that guy, to uh, Mr. Griffin, and he's running it down there. And we uh, did a holding no field goal here. We weren't physical enough, and we get moved out of there. Our beat tackles are getting moved out of there, and they're, they're making headway. we got to make that play on the goal line. But they, they get 17-7, and then... Uh, and this is momentum. where they grab momentum. The it game. is. We come back here. We get a first down. We get out to the 30. Feel very good first and 10. We don't want to force this. Hey, if they ain't there, throw it away. We're going to – and things that Jameis usually does. He got a little aggressive right here, and uh, they made a good play and picked it off and then got back and got a field goal right before half and got momentum. We were hoping to usually steal momentum before the half and do that, and uh, we end up scoring a second half first drive, but they got the momentum going in at halftime. They popped. At least we did hold him right here, and they got a field goal. Good job, Niall Lawrence. It's great to see Niall back out there. He really did some good things. He continues to improve on some little fundamentals. Got a chance to be a really, really good player. But they get the momentum 17, but we're still up 17 10 and a half. And, uh, you know, we got to play a better second half. Had the lead 17 0. It's cut to 17 10. As we look at the, uh, the biggest play in that first half presented by Napleton Infinity, go back to the pick six, which, uh, mm -hmm. you know, defense turning. Uh, Turning the ball over and then creating points right away for credit Nate Andrews. It did. Great job. Great job special teams that set that up. Got a tackle on the three-yard line. Force them to have to. You're limiting your play calls. There's only a few passes you can throw. Nate makes a great play. We score on defense. Set the tone of the game. Get up two scores. 
and uh, you know got things going in a positive way. What was your message at halftime to the team? Because we sort of had a tale of two quarters here. I mean, you played very well first quarter, second quarter, not as well. Well, even the second, well, about half of the second quarter we were. We were out okay. with about six, seven minutes to go. We played a good half of the second quarter, and then they got the drive and we had to pick. And it was just keep your, go back to your fundamentals. Let's mm -hmm. go back to what we did well. Let's, we'll go back to, we have a set of plays coming out we feel very comfortable with. Let's go back. It's a 0-0 half, win the half. Uh, don't get worried about the scoreboard. Let's just play a great second half. 17-10 at intermission, Florida State over Oklahoma State, but uh, still plenty of fireworks to come. We'll get to those second half highlights in just a little bit. Stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Emergencies, large and small, can happen at a moment's notice. That's why we now offer three convenient options to care for you. From treating heart attacks and strokes at the region's only trauma center, to minor injuries and illnesses at our urgent care center, and everything in between at the new Emergency Center Northeast. We have your emergency covered. Tallahassee Memorial, providing the most comprehensive emergency and urgent care services in the region, period. Here you go. Mmm, spicy. You mean her? No, it's the spicy smoked sausage sandwich, honey. See? see? It better be. Grab a spicy smoked sausage breakfast sandwich. It's the smoked sausage you crave, now spicy. America runs on Dunkin'. Pumpkin's back. Pumpkin is back at Dunkin' Donuts. Enjoy all your pumpkin-y favorites like the new pumpkin creme brulee latte. America runs on Dunkin'. team at Gem Collection makes everyone a winner. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. I've been blessed by faith and a wonderful woman who's my oncologist. My daughter is my inspiration. My mom raised a warrior. Thanks, Mom. Florida Cancer Specialists, they're like my family. Florida Cancer Specialist celebrates the millions of patients whose lives have inspired us. Nearly 200 physicians, over 80 locations. We're with you every step of your journey. Online at flcancer.com. Championship season in review presented by Hyundai. Proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. More important than anything, every possession is a Every possession is a Every possession is a Love, trust, and believe in each other. Go get me a crumb. Be elite, and let's go higher one time, boys. Let's go higher right now. Let's go crumb. Let's go. Puts total leather, and we are underway. Aguayo's kick comes down around the five-yard line. Seminole Gunners have him pinned in, and a missed tackle of the 15, tackle to the 19-yard line. Play action, Big Savage. It's the pass to the left slat, end of the goal line. It's a touchdown, Pittsburgh. There will be no shutout on opening day for the Florida State defense. First down, 10 pit, play action fake, dropping the throw. It's the quarterback, Savage throws it upfield. It's intercepted, picked off by a Seminole receiver at the 40 to the 35 to the 30. Flag has been thrown as well, but I think it's holding on the other team. For the shotgun, play action fake, James Winston throws the ball toward the end zone. Receiver wide open, yes. touchdown Florida State, touchdown FSU. It is Nick O'Leary wide open behind the safety, and the Knolls are a point away from tying. Power formation now with an extra blocker, play action Fake Jameis throws the pass. End zone caught. O'Leary's got two. Nick O'Leary's second touchdown catch of the game. And Jameis Winston is a perfect eight for eight. And the Knowles lead for the first time in 2013. He'll run the ball to the left side is Jameis Winston. He gets it inside the three, two, one. Touchdown, Florida State. Jameis Winston's thrown two and run one in. How about that for a debut by a redshirt freshman quarterback on opening weekend? 
tonight. Hash moving left, shotgun formation. Savage dropping, dropping, throwing a pass. It is intercepted. Picked off at the 40-yard line. Knowles have the ball with a chance to add to a 21 to 10 lead. Oh, here it is. James out of the shotgun. Pump fake. Throws a pass to the zone. Caught Rashadri. 3 2 1. Touchdown, Florida State. James Winston throws another touchdown. That's three touchdown passes in the game. And Rashad Green takes it in from 23 yards away. The kick is right between the uprights. A kick by Roberto Aguayo. Probably not the first field goal he'll have in his career. 31-10. Here's the snap. Out of the shotgun. Pressure coming. Savage. He will go down. He's socked at the 39-yard line. We sent LaMarcus Joyner. And Joyner just too fast on that cat blitz from the right side. Good snap this time. And Aguayo's kick is good. Just inside the right upright. And the Seminoles lead 34-13. to 13. Third down five. Here's the play action fake by Winston. Throws a pass. Wide open. It's a touchdown to the tight end, Nick O'Leary. He's got a hat trick of the Knowles. Have scored 40 on opening night. Ten-yard touchdown. And again, Nick O'Leary was wide open. Shotgun formation. The snap. Savage looking. Savage looking. Flesh out of the pocket. He will go down. Sack to the 32. Jimmy Jernigan got to him. And dropping to throw out of the gun. Here's pressure. Pressure. He's sacked again. At the 30-yard line, LaMarcus Joyner's got a pair of sacks. Also, only one time does Florida State's offense sputter and go three and out on the road against Pittsburgh. Good start for FSU. Ranked number 11. Impressive win. Championship season in review presented by Hyundai. Proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. We get set to take a look at the second half. And, Coach, uh, you had the lead and you get the ball coming out because you had won the toss early on and deferred. And, obviously, the objective here is to put the foot right back on the gas pedal and put points on the board. It is. Stay, stay aggressive and get points coming out the second half. Which we were able to get a nice drive down here and we ended up getting the field goal again, which was disappointing. But we still got points, which is critical and got us to a two-score lead. Got a decent low return here by Kermit. We got blocked, missed a block right inside on it. Actually got split that was guy we had double teamed. And, uh, but good return. Kermit hit it up in there hard and uh, did a nice job. We get nice little uh, action here. We're trying to go deep on the play. We get an interference call. Uh, Rashad had him. Actually, we could have got that ball out. There had been a touchdown. We need to get a little, keep our feet a little calmer in the pocket. But uh, Rashad was winning his one-on-one -on -one battles. Now we get a nice play action. Great throw by here by James. I mean, he threads a needle right to number 80. Uh, well, I wish we could just go ahead and get those in the end zone. But again, another big play taking us down the field, and uh, that combination is working very well. Now we, get, we just miss a block. We just miss a block at left tackle right here and uh, give up penetration and uh, get a six-yard loss. You know, we're down there, so we get – then we miss a second down play. So, third down, we run it. Say so a third and 16, we need to get to so – odds of getting the first down aren't very good, so we set up the field goal, get up two scores. And here they hit a nice crossing route. Dan Ramsey on the play. Uh, they had the momentum. They come back and they, they get us a bubble pump. They hit that fake screen out there where they throw that little swing pass out to 24 a couple times. They pumped it and – we, they were in a three-man size instead of a two-man, and we should have pushed it. One of our guys just had to jump and make the play, got undisciplined, and uh, gave up a big play. We actually worked on that very hard. But they get a score, 20-17. We get some moment. Now, right here, bad decision right here. Need to take that ball. We had Nick open down the field here. They had a blitz coming, got right where we wanted. We just got to get that ball down there. Jameis settled down, though, come back. Man, nice side adjust throw right here to uh, Rashad, and uh, uh, they brought the blitz on an empty. And right here, they, they did it. This is a great deal. This is hard. It looks like you threw it right to him. There's a down lineman who rushed and then backed out of his own blitz deal. That's hard to see sometimes. Again, we missed rotation here with the safety. Our safety's got to rotate down. We've been inside out on that play. It's been a no gain. We didn't get the rotation down. And uh, now they get here. They're getting a the screen. Great job of recognizing the screen up front by uh, Derek Mitchell, who played, I thought, really starting to come on and play good football for us. Number 11. Good to see him. They get a shot. They're taking a shot to the end zone. They about got it. Great play right Good strip right there by 26. What's your teeth? Bring your hands right down, your arm right down through the hands and get the strip on there. Good job by P.J. Williams. Oh, and they snapped the ball. We got a break. They hit the up man. They just, that wasn't a fake. They just actually snapped it into him, and uh, we got good field position, and uh, we're able to go very aggressive right here. We get a nice little toss sweep outside. Great blocking by Cam. Great job by uh, Carlos getting on the edge right there. Freddie Stevenson had a good block to lead him down through there. So uh, we got a nice gain right here. We have a little route call mixed in with the quarterback draw. And then now uh, this, this is a scramble, excuse me, on third down. They had a holding call right here, which is critical. They tackled actually two of our inside receivers. Actually could have had two of them uh, on the play. They, they did a nice job of seeing those. A lot of folks don't see those sometimes on those slots. And, uh, 
We're able to get that critical first down. Boom, we hit the quarterback draw. Great block right there by Carlos. Uh, look at Josue, about 30 yards down the field. Then <laughs> he ducks out of the way and lets him get in. Jameis got in. He's trying to stick that ball in. He's got to keep it tucked. And luckily, he crossed the goal line before he fumbled it. And that, that's something we got to work on. We can't be doing that. Heck of a highlight but run, it, though. It was a great run. Great run. Great play by him. Uh, big time play and big time moments. He got us up to 10 points again in two scores. Oh, see, right there, missed tackle. We got the play played perfect. We tried to get a knockout, but Mario just missed the tackle. We got it played perfectly. And uh, he tries to knock the guy out and say, just make the tackle. Now, good job right here. Now Lawrence up, up inside, stayed his gap control and uh, playing well. Getting lost, contained on the edge, but he forced the quarterback to get the ball out of his hand. Getting some pressure, mixed in there. Yeah, great. I'm going to tell you what, Mario Pender, we got, he'll get a lot more action coming up. I thought the carries he had in the game were outstanding. I thought he had great runs every time he touched the football. Carlos getting a stretch play out here. Great job on the third and one. We pick up about eight, nine yards. Good job of size and speed right there, sticking it up in there. There we go. Get a little out route to, to Rashad, get it to, back to a third and manageable. We come up about a foot short on a uh, little whip route to the side. Good high punt right here. I'd like to get a little more depth on this thing, but uh, you know, we covered it well and give them the return. They hit the edge, lost can, right here. We got number one's got set the edge. We had 24 inside. He comes down. He come down inside. Should have came down outside. And he was in position. We just lost leverage on the football. And right here, we had a blitz. Had a guy. If he stunts inside, we're going to hit the quarterback right in the mouth unblocked. We stun outside. He didn't get the gap inside. They hit it. Quarterback's a very good athlete, by the way. Thought he ran really well. They tipped the ball inside. Good play by Kermit. Kermit had three or four critical third down catches in that game last night. And uh, you know, really happy to see him do it inside and out. We get to get to play action again. James got to throw his ball away. Got to dump it down to his back. And uh, get out of it. But that was a game. It was a real, it was a heck of a football game. Again, not the punt we want. Uh, we got to work on that, but great coverage by Roderick Hoskins on the side. Getting a nice play action here. Great. It's a big play, Mario. Everybody, this sack. This sack. This set him back. Now they got behind the sticks. And they're second and 20 now, or 25, whatever it may be. And uh, very critical. Again, right here. There you go. Demarcus Walker getting pressure. We're starting to really pressure that quarterback. And then uh, trying to throw in the run. Couldn't quite make the plays. And third down. Really, we should have had this pick right here. We misjudged this football. And uh, could have made a pick. But good job by Tyler Hunter making the play. And we pin them back, and we get good field position coming back. We hit this route. Now, this is a critical mistake. He got to run that route no more than three yards of the sideline. He gets within a yard and fades away to catch the ball. We got a touchdown play, and he runs out of bounds. They made a good play, but we still get out of bounds. Now, Rashad, we had to come back uh, and get a, get a holding call the very next play. Then we're behind the sticks. We end up picking up a third down here, get a closer field goal, and get up six points, and make it so at least they have to score a touchdown. And we got three more points on the board. Third and 18, the chances are going to be tough. We want to shorten that field goal. Now they had the quarterback run, very critical right here. P.J. Williams making a big hit and getting and getting the recovery. And uh, P.J. always seems to make big plays at big times. In here, we had a little crossing system going back inside. I uh, could have hit Nick or Rashad. He found Rashad. He's put the seam down, and that's one thing Rashad did. Once he gets ahead, it's hard to catch him. And, uh, that guy making another, another big time play. Another big time play. 11 catches over 200 yards mm -hmm. for Rashad. I think only the 11th player in school history to go over 200 yards receiving. Now this is this is a critical mistake. We have a pooch kick here, and we get we pinch our whole side down, and they collapse. We should have leverage on the back. We had two guys running completely out of a lane, and uh, this can't happen. This guy here gets on the edge; he can win. And they get the field position, get all the way back. Where you know we pin them back back there, it takes some time to get down, eat clock, or use their timeouts, and then uh, we give up a rush lane here. We didn't stay disciplined in our rush lane, and uh, they pop it out. They get a quarterback run here, and uh, they're able to get it in the end zone. Then we're back to a six-point game. And then we did something that was extremely critical here. We get the onside kick, and we're able to milk the clock in the last one. They had 10 guys on the ball, and we had one-on-one. -on -one. They, I didn't think they was going to call it back. They were tackling him at the line of scrimmage, and they finally got that holding call right there. It was caught, and they had three timeouts, so it's critical. We got that first down, then we get this next first down on a big run and they had 10 they had all 11 guys within two yards of the ball so we had to throw it now we pop a run right here this is a critical run able to get the next first down now they only got one time out we're down to a minute 35 and uh, we can basically we got to run to play we got we have to milk the clock the right way 
And the, here, the, here's the part I don't understand. If we would have thrown that ball, if they, we would have called a penalty. We'd have had two seconds on the clock, been able to run a play and so over. Because they call a penalty, they're able to keep six seconds on the clock. So we have the play where we drop back, throw a post or a go. We throw it high and long as we can out of the end zone if we're close enough. If not, we'd have thrown a go route out of, the end, out, out of bounds there. And then eat it. you can eat up six, seven, even eight seconds on the clock, and so they would never touch the ball again. But I want to, we got to check on that rule. That was kind of crazy. But the thing we did, we were able to not give them the ball back once we got it back with, with over two and a half minutes to go, and they had three timeouts. Critical. We had two critical first downs. 37-31, the final score. Florida State wins it. Uh, certainly, as we've talked about, a lot of room for improvement oh, yes. from your team, but yet. Uh, you know, a, a team that's top ranked and a team that's a, a championship level team is going to find a way to win even when you don't have your A game, so to speak. We made plays when we had to make plays, got turnovers, got, you know, Rashad on attack. We scored on offense when we, you know, Jameis made a great run, Rashad made a great run, and made great throws and catches. And being able to do that is, people say, well, if we just had one more play. Well, we were making that one play. But what we got to learn to do, we got ourselves off, off the turf, but we can't get, let ourselves get knocked down like that. We got to play with more consistency. And, more, and, and just execute a lot better and put plays together and, and to drive offense, defense better in our special teams. Because in all three phases, we've got tons of room for improvement. But that's a good thing. Now, now we can coach them hard and, and develop. And every team in the country right now is a work in progress. Just like this. Several big plays in the second half. Uh, the biggest presented by Xfinity. We could have gone uh, with Jameis Winston's touchdown run or that, that turnover. But uh, in the end, it was the game-winning touchdown to Rashad Green, who just had uh, – one of the better games the receivers probably ever had for Florida State. It really was a big time moment. He and, he and Jameis and Rashad hooked up, and Rashad finished the play, and that's what he does when he gets out in space. He can really run away from guys, and thought he played very big all night, and uh, he was our player of the game on offense. I know you're in midseason, uh, you know, week to week, so it's not time to reflect back. But but Rashad's a guy who's had a knack for making big plays at big times during his whole career. He always has, and that's and that's what you know. Big time players make plays when they have to, and, and like I say, and he doesn't talk a lot, doesn't say a lot. He just his performance takes over everything. No question about that. FSU gets a win. They are 1-0. and We'll talk about the upcoming opponent for the home opener when we come back. Stay with us on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Barry may not be cool, but at least he's a cheap date. For just 36 cents a day, less than what you spend on a cup of coffee, the Bear No Heating and Air Conditioning Total Comfort Service Agreement offers peace of mind and a bevy of benefits. Two free annual tune-ups, top priority service, 15% discount on any repair or duct cleaning, no overtime fees ever, $25 in Barry bonus bucks. Turn to the experts at Bear No and Carrier to find out more. Florida license number CAC057652. Visit us at BearNoAC.com or call 850-580-4029 to learn more about how we can bring you worry-free service. Build it, you demolish it. The legendary Home Wrecker Burrito. Come build yours today with 20 plus fresh ingredients. It's tailgate time at Candy World of Tallahassee. And we're kicking off the season with unprecedented discounts. Score huge savings on our entire inventory. New travel trailers, perfect for tailgate season. Starting at only $129 per month. Or new fifth wheel, starting at $275 per month. Don't forget to check out our Camping World parts and accessories store. We have all the tailgating supplies you need. Plus, ask how you can upgrade to the Good Sam Elite Loyalty Program. Stop watching from the sidelines and get record-breaking savings. At the Camping World Tailgate Kickoff in Tallahassee. Hey, Seminole fans, Gene Deckeroff here for Garnet and Gold. Did you know that Garnet and Gold is the only locally owned FSU apparel store in Tallahassee? We know you have a number of choices, and we are grateful you choose us. New merchandise arrives daily. We have it all. And check out our boutique section. We have a great selection of ladies' boutique apparel and jewelry. So come see us at one of our three Tallahassee locations or visit us on the web at GarnetandGold.com. We're locally owned since 1979. Garnet and Gold. That's a touchdown, Florida State. I'm Nate Andrews from Fairhope, Alabama. I play defensive back, and I'm a sophomore. Back is Price. Price jumps the ball. It's intercepted. Picked off. It's the 50 to the 40 to the 30. It's Nate Andrews to the 20. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Florida State. Nate Andrews with a defensive gym. And the Seminoles lead 27 to nothing. Well, Fairhope is a small little town. It's very quiet. 
It's a bunch of nice people. It's like a retirement city, so a lot of, I mean, old people live there. So, I mean, it's not too much of a big city or nothing like that. It's just very small and just, it's very beautiful. So if you ever wanted to go there just to like, if you're retired, that's, where, that's the place you should go. Oh, my mom, because my mom, she always like worked hard. She had like two jobs when I was younger. She was a single parent, so I mean, she always worked hard through it, no matter what the situation was. She made sure we we had food on the table and just, and like we played sports. She paid all, for all three sports we played, because we played football, basketball, and baseball, all three of my brothers. Well, I was actually a baseball player. Like, I played baseball all my life, and like when I got to high school, my mom made me quit because she didn't want us to play two sports. So, I mean, I was very disappointed, but all my life I wanted to be a baseball player, but now I'm playing football. It was actually very tough because, I mean, when I was first, when I first got here, I wasn't used to, like, the college life. I mean, it was, it was tough just um, transitioning into um, college. I mean, you had to do everything on your own, and, like, I, I got, like, I got very, like, depressed because I, I wasn't used to being on my own. I didn't have my mom there. I love playing video games. Like playing with the team, my teammates. That's all we do is play video games. We play FIFA like every single day. Like, like during camp, we might go home for like an hour and play FIFA, and we like we're very competitive at playing each other in FIFA. So, video games, it is. I've always wanted to be a coach. Like, that's. I mean, I play football because I love it. But at the end of the day, I mean, I want to be a coach. I want to because I want to give back and show kids like. Yeah, I mean, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. So I want to be a coach one day. I was so happy. Uh, just being there, it was a great experience. But when it, like, it's every kid's dream to go to the national championship. And like, playing in the game, I was like, like all my life, I was like, how would I feel when I played the national championship? And like, I, I had no feeling. I wasn't nervous going into the game. I was more ready because the whole week, we practice, practice, like your, your whole life, you want to do something like this. And just being in the game, it was just, it's so like awesome. I was like, I've been waiting all this time. It, it was actually my first ring just through high school. I didn't win any championships or anything like that. So just having a ring, I was so happy. I took pictures of it, showed it to my mom. I was, I was bragging, look, mom, look what I got. look into the history, what makes it unique and important, interview a lot of student athletes, students, alumni, and really find the essence of what the university is, really what made that decision for them to go there versus another university. And from that we get a lot of values and those values kind of define, they're the yardstick of the project to make sure that anything that we're doing matches up with those values and is of the essence of Florida State. Once we commissioned them, we asked Nike to do this, not the other way around, was the extent they went to try and achieve authenticity in everything. And the uniforms in the Seminole head itself, they they talked themselves to the Seminole tribe, they talked, came on campus and talked to students, kind of veiled it, they didn't exactly say this is what we're doing. From the time you set foot in Tallahassee, you know what the what it means to be a Seminole, you know what it means to, to wear garnet and gold. We really wanted to take all of that essence and really just, just bring it into a, a new context. Keeping all the same values, keeping all the same traditions, keeping all the same even language of that and just bring it and refine it a little bit so that it's easier to reproduce, um, glorifies it a little bit more and just really makes it a new proud moment for Florida State. You know, it's a very recognizable mark. There's not no, there's no country, there's no uh, college in the nation that has something that is so distinctive, but it's just taking that distinctive qualities and making it better. There's no one when that new logo flashes on the screen would not identify that as still being Osceola and Florida State University. Refined, the 
with the sun. That seminal mark in the context of college sports is iconic and authentic to who Florida State is and kind of the embodiment of what it means to be a Seminole and what it means to be an athlete at Florida State. It's something that, that really is uh, representative of uh, a Seminole warrior and, and really speaks to the attributes of student athletes. One of the hardest things that we had to be able to reproduce was the original Seminole head and the, the delicate nature of Florida State written in the feather and the, you know those types of details. It was really something that we wanted to make sure that it's reproducible, that you get consistency and you're building equity. We were having to turn down things because the Florida State logo wouldn't reproduce correctly and our coaches had stopped putting the Seminole head on their uniforms because it didn't reproduce correctly and uh, we needed to change that. We want that Seminole head, which is already as iconic as any in the country, we want to amplify that even more, and I think we'll reach that. So we wanted the Seminole head more exposed. I think sort of there's a thought out there that maybe we're trying to get rid of the Seminole head. Nothing could be further from the truth. We've refined the Seminole head uh, by Florida State's desire. We, we've changed the look of it some. It's much cleaner in terms of how you can reproduce. The mark had been kind of um, fragmented over time and that happens with use of a mark that's been in use for, for many many years but we were able to kind of refine it and make it more graphic something that speaks to kind of uh, the future and the future of Florida State. Working with the tribe about how they wanted to view that and really kind of defining that in a, in a modern context in a new way but really Traditionally, it is pretty much the same mark. It's just done in a slightly different format that is more reproducible and actually glorifies that mark even better. A lot of consistency elements that come out, um, obviously with the very strong brands, is color. So really having the, the right garnet, the right gold, really making sure that all the marks are very reproducible, that you can be consistent over time. We saw reds, we saw darker garnets, even within what the coaches would wear and, and on the uniforms itself. So that was, that was startling to us and we realized we had an issue and we said, well our state collectively went to Nike and said, what can we do? We want our garnet uh, and we want it, our uniforms to reflect our garnet and to match what Coach Fisher's wearing, to match what the trainer's wearing, to match what the quarterback's wearing, and then ultimately what the guy on the 50 yard line's wearing. And so that was one of our top goals. So the shading had changed and we just wanted to put a stop to that. And we arrived at a color that nobody else in the country is going to wear. Not a college team, not a pro team. It's Florida State Garnet, and we're really proud of that. It's a line in the sand and an opportunity to move forward. One school, one color, uh, and really, really define the parameters around what it means to be Garnet and Gold. The 100 guys running out of the stadium and, and just that power of that and that excitement of that brand at that statement, that's, that's what we live for. With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Emergencies, large and small, can happen at a moment's notice. That's why we now offer three convenient options to care for you. From treating heart attacks and strokes at the region's only trauma center, to minor injuries and illnesses at our urgent care center, and everything in between at the new Emergency Center Northeast. We have your emergency covered. Tallahassee Memorial, providing the most comprehensive emergency and urgent care services in the region, period into account the Euclidean theory of whole numbers, one can see a rationalization between the numbers themselves and the entity upon which the transvectoring factors occur. That is not to say that the transgental factoring is a factor of one, but rather a sublimation of the factor of one. Needless to say, this will be on the exam. Thanks, dude. See you tomorrow. Jimmy John. Order online at jimmyjohns.com. You remembered to call the plumber before we left, right? The plumber? Uh, yeah, no, of course I did. I called him last week. Okay. Uh. 
water damage, fire, and mold remediation. We take care of them all, day or night. Bone dry, restoration, and cleaning. I'll call bone dry. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, you get to come home this week. That'll be exciting. Uh, you only get seven opportunities at home every year. This is the home opener in Citadel. Coming. It really is. It's great to get the kids back on the field, get back in Doak Campbell Stadium, see our own fans, and uh, hopefully improve a lot between the first and second weeks. Tell us a little bit about uh, just a thumbnail on what Citadel does. Well, Citadel is a very similar defense to what we just played. A lot of the same fronts, 4 2 5, and they'll mix up multiple, and a lot of the same zone blitzes and fire zones. And uh, on offense, they like to run that option and bone and very disciplined on how they do it. And it's a totally different uh, concept in which we do very, a lot of the Georgia Tech background stuff. So uh, we're going to have a, a totally different concept to prepare for and get ready for. All right, and uh, kickoff comes up at 7.30 this week. Some uh, enhancements to the stadium, too. A new paint job looks good with uh, uh, the national championship recognized as well. Not that that's your concern right now, but the fans will look forward to it. So we'll see you Saturday at Doe Campbell Stadium. Still a little bit more time left, so we'll come back and finish up this edition of the show right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back, Seminole fans. We're joined, as always, by the head chef of Florida State Athletics, Joyce Simons. And today, we're going to be making everyone's favorite. If you're a red-blooded American, you love steak, you love uh, beef tenderloin, commonly more known as filet, we're going to be focusing on lean meat and what that does from a nutritious aspect. Correct, yeah. Today, I have a great portion of steak for you. It's a filet. Um, as you can see, there's really no fat on it. It's a very lean cut. So. With those other cuts, maybe like ribeye, where you can see a lot of the white marbling around it, all that fat's gone, and it's going to leave you with less calories and a better portion of steak. So um, today we're going to, I'm going to show you how to sear a steak, cook it in the oven, and then um, get maximum flavor out of what you have. So I'm going to turn on my pan, put a little oil in it, and then we're going to season our steak. So we have this great filet, and we're going to push put a rub on a plate, and then we're gonna do both sides of the steak. So, just shake it off. We wanna make sure it has great um, coating on each side because this is all the flavor that you're gonna get and um, you wanna have as much as possible. This rub has some salt and pepper in it, so you don't, don't even have to do extra salt and pepper on your steak. That's gonna create that nice little crust on the outside too. If you put, it, if you put that on there, doesn't it, it creates kind of an extra, I guess another layer, and more, I guess another flavor layer, I guess, if you will. Yeah. So um, something we're going to do with our steak is, so we're going to put it in a pan with some oil. You're going to hear it sizzle. And some people are afraid of the sound of sizzling, but all that sizzling and browning is flavor. And you really want to get all the brown you can on your steak without burning it, and that just adds tons of flavor. So we're going to sear it on both sides. And then right before it goes in the oven, we're going to add some mushrooms to our pan. And they're going to soak up any extra fat, and this is an easy way to roast them. And then we're going to put some thyme in. And thyme adds all the flavor you need to the mushrooms, and the mushrooms will soak up a little extra fat from your filet too. So once our steak has done, is done searing and comes out of the oven, you'll see the mushrooms are really nice and brown, and that the steak has browned on both sides really well. Then we're going to add two pats of butter into it, just like that, and they're going to melt over our mushrooms. We're just going to add them, and that'll be really all the fat we have in this dish. So you're going to have a great plate with some steak and some delicious roasted mushrooms. So once our steak is done and our butter has melted, something I like to plate it with is some carrots. Today we have some artisan carrots. We have a yellow and a purple, something a little different to add color to your plate. We're just going to take the steak. You can see it's nice and juicy. It's browned on both sides without burning. We're going to put that down. We're going to whip around our butter a little bit. This, at this point, you can take your time out. We'll just discard that. And then we can even use your tongs as a spoon. And you're just going to set your mushrooms on top of your dish. It's going to have tons of flavor with, with a little bit of fat. Do you want to try that? Absolutely. Scott? It looks, See I mean, how it tastes? Finishing, finishing it off in the oven really does help too, because I mean, you can almost get that, that really nice seared texture on the outside. And yeah. Then when you put, and then it's, it's still nice and you can take a look at that. It's still nice and moist on the inside. Yeah. Even you put it in the oven. Nice big piece on this. You can control your time and you don't necessarily have to have a grill to have a great steak. Mm, that was a fantastic steak. 
all that flavor goes right into the steak. That yeah. seared on the outside, mm, that was perfect. Yeah, and you don't necessarily have to do it with mushrooms if you don't like. You can do it with whatever vegetable. That steak's just got great flavor. That lean meat, the grass-fed beef, there's nothing better than that. Thanks again. This is an awesome recipe. And, of course, you can get all the recipes, all the great information from Joyce Simons right now by visiting Seminoles.com. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, the cliche uh, is that, uh, you know, you make the biggest improvement between week one and week two. I'm interested in your thoughts on that. But more than that, you know, now that you look back, there's a lot of teachable things that oh. you can take out of this game. And I'm curious if, if the players – respond better when you can show them on tape where the mistakes were. There's no doubt. And we have so many young guys that just are still learning that how important practice is and the tempo of practice and that are in our 2D roster. Not that they aren't trying. It's just that they have to see the value of it. And our older guys are implementing that in. But you know, we're getting better at it. And uh, our older guys will uh, you know, work on the things they have to work on, get those young guys ready to go. And as our development of our young players throughout the year is going to be very critical to have the success we have. Are you getting the type of leadership from the older guys, the upper class? That you that you need and want, or is that oh, a work yeah. in progress too? I, I don't. I mean, there's always a work because it, team always finds its identity and, and how every, the inner workings of it go. But I've been very. We have plenty of guys who step up, lead, do it by example, do it you know whether it's verbally or you know however we want it done, and uh, we're we're growing in that aspect also. All right, Florida State uh, opens at home this Saturday, Doe Campbell Stadium. We will see you there, and then we'll see you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show.